Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to another exciting uh, webinar um, on Sunday and um, and I know that uh, you could have been with your family uh, going outside well I don't know if the weather is um, is, is very encouraging for you to go outside but alhamdulillah you know that you are uh, you are here with us and and inshallah you know I hope that you will be able to uh, benefit from uh, some of the things that has been sh that will be shared today by Brother Ahmed. Um, I've mean, already introduced Brother Ahmed to you last week, and Alhamdulillah, you know, we're very pleased to have him, and uh, and he's been doing a lot of work, as I have said to you, that in Middle East as well as now in the UK, and from from the UK now he's working with organisations around the world. Um, so. And he's a specialist in uh, in psychology and the psychology of learning. And Alhamdulillah, he's going to be covering another exciting topic today on how to instill love of learning uh, in our students. And he's going to be looking at it from a psychological perspective, from an Islamic perspective, and also what we can do to ensure that uh, our students um, learn and more importantly our children as well. So I think uh, we're, it's going to be a very fascinating session once again and I would like to welcome uh, Brother Ahmed uh, to deliver his session. Once again it's going to be about 45 minutes of presentation and then it will be followed by Q&A and I know that last week because of technical issues um, we could not cover some of the things so maybe Brother Ahmed will actually go back to some of the things that he was going to cover so that we can um, include it in this session. It may be possible that this session might overrun by, uh, by maybe a half an hour or so. Um, but of course, you do not need to stay here um, uh, after, after an hour, because this is a one hour session, you're welcome to leave, it's not a problem. But we would encourage you to stay until the end, because uh, as I said, it will be a very fascinating session. Um, so, welcome Brother Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Kaiser. Thank you very much once again for joining us and and we're really, really happy for, on behalf of Nida Trust uh, to have you here again and uh, and for all your support. Uh, may Allah bless you and uh, please when you're ready, inshallah, you may start your presentation, inshallah. Barakallah feek and uh, first of all, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I'd like, first of all, to thank Brother Faisal and uh, his group in Midas Trust to inviting me to meet uh, this educator. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me uh, to uh, do something today uh, special for all of us, for our uh, children, for ourselves, inshallah, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's what we think to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and feel that we uh, at least did some of our obliga obligation uh, toward our nation, toward our generation uh, today. Uh, last, last week, we were talking about uh, psychological of learning and uh, how, we, uh, how we can deliver our... Um, our, our, our message, our, uh, our knowledge for those students using uh, psychology, uh, psychological uh, theories. And uh, today I'm going to stop with one thing first, uh, like an introduction about that, then inshallah we'll go to talk about uh, how we can uh, let our, our students, our children to, to love uh, learning. Uh, when we talk to our children, they don't know what the uh, significant uh, information that we give them. Uh, so it's a lot of information we talk. We have a lot of information. And uh, as well, this mind is a really uh, a complicating mind. And it has a lot of abilities as we human beings, we don't use most of it, but it can, the memory can uh, memorize a lot of things like your pictures and what they see every day. And uh, yeah, and when they come to the school every day, they see a lot of things and it goes to their memory and that affects their life. So they don't know sometimes what is the 
significant information, what is the important information that they have to focus on? One of the important things that we have to understand, please listen to me, and this is very important. When I say, please listen to me, don't you feel it's different? That's what we call the keynotes, or the, uh, it's, it's actually the keywords, sorry. The keywords, the, the keynotes is the program that I use, <laughs> but the keywords, the keywords for what? For concentration, to take their attention. If you want them to give you their attention, that you have to have some words. This words go to their minds. It's not uh, about their ears. No, it's their mind. Let me tell you, like, like what I said, please listen to this word. So when you listen to that word, when, when I say that, it's, uh, it's, it's very important. You, you, you feel this is very important information that you have to pay attention of. Uh, when you have some words that your students know, like, here you go, here you go, when you say, here you go, here you go, listen to this story. When they, when they see you do it several times and they uh, understand when you say that, that there is something important, they pay attention. They take their the piece of paper and then they try to uh, to get the information and they uh, see or, or listen to that information as an important information so if you have the keynotes like sometimes you should tell them if i repeat any word or any information twice okay that means it's an important information so you should listen you should write it down. You should do and do such and such. So you can organize their thinking. You can let them control their information, what is important, what is uh, not important or insignificant. So this is one of the psychological way how to teach children. This is what I want actually, the, that point that I wanted to start with. Then I uh, will go now to, the, uh, to our session today. Uh, our session today, let me, let me uh, ask you a question, or, or it's not, actually, this is, this is a very important question that we have to uh, think about it. When we talk about something that we have to understand what is the definition of that. What is love? What is love? This is a question, it's not, uh, for 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 any people, this is a, I, I, I mean I mean for most of us, this is a simple question. Simple question. What I love that what 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 is the love or what is love? Love is feeling. Yes, it is feeling. But let's do one exercise that can show us what is love. Okay. I want everyone to have a piece of paper piece of paper, like uh, uh, A4, A4 paper, it's good to have it, okay? If you have a piece of paper, please, please uh, write in the chat number one, just number one, that you have a piece of paper and you have a pen as well, pencil or pen, there is no problem, okay, I have a pencil or, uh, or pen, uh, okay, you can see, okay. this is the, the pen, okay? If you have a piece of paper, A4 or any, any size, okay? Great, great, this is a, only one person who has a piece of paper and a uh, second person, mashallah, great, great, please. If you don't have, please just bring one. Great, three, all right, three people. Let's go to up. Huh? Three people. More. More, please. We're going to do uh, an exercise. Four. Okay, great. 
four of you. Yeah, 30 seconds. We will give. I will give you 30 seconds to have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. Great. Five. Okay. Six. Shall I will find? Yeah, yeah. You're going to find a piece of paper. It's, it's actually just a piece of paper. There is no problem. What kind of paper is that? All right. Six, only six people. Hey, Ustad Nasim. Barakallah Fiq, Ustad Nasim. Zakallah Khair. Yeah. Ustad Nasim has a piece of paper. Great. Who else? Ah, MashaAllah, Ustad Tahir. Ustad Tahir. Barakallah Fiq. Great. All right. All right, uh, time's up. Now we're gonna go for our exercise, please. For you, what what is this paper? What does it what does it mean for you? And or what what's the value of this paper? It's maybe one of the uh, many paper that you have. Doesn't mean anything. Not that much. Uh, maybe maybe if you. Uh, find how, how much is that when you, when you buy it, maybe, maybe less than 1p. So it, it's nothing, it's nothing. All right, uh, let's take this paper and I want you to write down on the paper, okay? On the paper, I want you to write down a name of a person that you love. A name of a person that you love. Write it down. All right? A person that you love. Okay, great. Fold, fold the paper in a half. Let the what you wrote inside. All right? And Fold it in a half. Can you see? Okay. Maybe, maybe if I, uh, it's better to have it without. Uh, yeah, fold it in a half. All right. Fold it in a half. Then write down here, here, a sentence that you like this sentence you like to hear it you like to say it even assalamu alaikum even good morning what whatever word any 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 sentence that you like to hear it uh, just write it down maybe a verse of quran anything that you you like to hear or you like to say write it here okay then fold it in a half again inside. All right. If you don't have a piece of paper, you can write what what the, the, the answers in, in in the computer. Use 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 the notes and write it down. All right. Don't fold your computer, please. Just uh, fold the paper, all right? But if you want to uh, do, I, I mean, I mean the, uh, to write it down in the computer, there is no problem, all right? Then I want you to write now a place that you like to go for, place that you like to visit, any place in the world. In the world, I'm not talking about hereafter. Don't say Jannah. Don't say paradise, no, no, no. I want something in the life. You like to go, all right? 
a place that you love, you like to go for, write it down. Then, again, fold it in a half. All right. Now, write kind of type of food that you like to eat. Any food, name it. Write it down. And kabsa, biryani, uh, mashawi, whatever you like, mansaf. Write it down. Then fold it in a half. All right? Fold it in half. All right? Then, please, this is the last one, okay? Write on the top of that paper, write activities that you like to do. Activities that you like to join or to do. Any activities, not only sports activities, any activities that you like to do. Walking, uh, cutting uh, trees, uh, playing football, uh, chatting, uh, social, in, in your social life, whatever activities that you like. All right, fold it in half. And now, I want to ask you a question about this paper after you finish. You wrote a lot of things. If I ask you to give this paper a name, a name for this paper, what you gonna name it? Can you write it in the chat? Please, if you can write it in the chat, that will be great. What is this paper now for you? If you can, please write your feeling about this paper or what this paper, what, what is the name of this paper for you? My life, great. My life, myself, great. Me, nice. My life, myself, me, things I love, me. Story of my life, wow, about me, my interest, great, me, 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 wow, all right, my personal thoughts, great, oh, mashallah, I like that, mashallah, uh, yani this is like um, a title of a nice program, uh, my personal thought, my true self, uh, me, myself, and I, wow, that's great, that's great, okay. Hopiness, all right, L-V-E-O, <laughs> that's me love, I think, that's me love, <laughs> all right. Uh, that's great, that's great. This paper was nothing, this paper was nothing. But now it has a significant meaning until some of you say this is me, my interest, my life. My, uh, some, some of you say me, me, me. This is, this is oh, I'm sorry, I lost my, uh, my paper. But it is actually, the paper became significant for you because what you put in it, so why do you love this paper now? The feeling that you have for this paper, which is change from nothing to a thing that say it's me, this is the feeling of loving something, of have something as a, a significant thing in your life. It gives you a meaning for this life. So this is the love. Uh, you can imagine when someone now, if I tell one of you to cut this paper and to throw it in the trash, sorry for that, trash, just 
put it in a, in a, in a pen. Do you, do you accept that? This paper was nothing, but now maybe if I ask you to do, to, to cut it or to throw it in the pen, you will not, you will not accept that because it is significant now. You wrote something that you like. So this is the feeling that we have to think about it when our children, they, uh, they like learning or they don't like it. Does it make any, uh, is, it, is it significant in their life and how we make it significant for them until they don't want to lose it? They want to attend all the time. They want to go for it and they want to gain some knowledge. Why? And inshallah ta'ala, we're gonna talk about that, but we're gonna go first of all to talk about a fact. A fact that uh, it's in our, uh, in our life, uh, our children life, Uh, sorry. Okay, the fact says that the most common difficulty that learners uh, encounter is that most students lack a deep desire to learn and distance motivation due to intimidation intimidation and the obligation to study and learn. We always tell our children that it is, it is your obligation to do it. It is your obligation. Is that right? Yes, it's right. It's, re it's really their obligation. But believe me, when you go to pray and feel only this is your obligation to do it, that Prayer will not affect you and will not do anything in your life. And actually, this is not uh, that the, 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 the prayer meant to in our life. No, it has to change our behavior, our manner, our thinking. So how is that? When we love to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to meet whatever, you, your faith, now I, I don't know if all the people uh, are Muslim or not, but whatever faith, if you don't believe in what you do, if you don't love what you do, uh, it, it will not affect your life positively. So this is that knowledge, when you get the knowledge, when you get the knowledge, and you don't know, yani, you, you don't love knowledge. Uh, most of the students, they go, to the school from the first year, they don't know why they go to the to uh, to, to, to the to the, to the school. Uh, they told them, this is the age of the school. That's it. This is the age of the school. So you have to go. So how do they feel? And they don't have the choice to go or not. One of the teachers told me that I, I, uh, she asked a, a student uh, about, about why he's not uh, doing his homework, why uh, he has a problem and he's naughty in the, in the class. Why do you do that? He said, because uh, I don't like to come. She said, so, uh, why do you come? Why do you come to the school now? If you come, she, uh, she was asking him about to, to tell him that you have to come to school for your future and such things that we usually uh, tell our children. But his question shocked her. He said, I have no choice. I have no choice. Do I have choice? Do, do, can I choose I, to come or not? No. My parents told me to come and I have no choice. I'm going to lose a lot of things. I, I, will, uh, I will be punished. There is no way. Is that, is that the right way to let our students and our children to go to school and uh, to do uh, their homework? Let's 
talk about that in details a little bit and let's talk how we can uh, change that in nine steps i'm gonna go through nine steps which is very very important uh, and i'd like to <laughs> you to focus on that this is uh sorry this is the fact that i talk about uh, yes yes this is the first step we have to ask ourselves do we love what we do when we think think about i i know i know maybe yani, all of the people here they love what they do they love teaching uh, but the students the students actually they feel it i we uh, i i have life skills workshop for the students it's weekly one uh, they are from from 10 to 13 years old a uh, few weeks ago we were talking about about when you do something that you love how you feel so i was telling them about how to choose their future and how to choose their uh, their subject when they will, will study in the future when they go to the university so they asked me they uh, they asked me the question this is a question oh teacher uh, mr ahmed uh, what do you like to do i asked them what do you think i like to do i can say uh, they, they are nine students. I can say all of them said teaching. They feel that I like teaching. I like to teach them. Okay. Do we show our students that? We have to show them. And we can transfer this love of teaching to them as, uh, as uh, the love of learning. It will be going automatically uh, for them. Uh, this is the first step. And as I said, it's very important. I think, I think there is something I, I will read. If there is chat, any question, anything uh, that. This is an Arabic. This is Arabic. Uh, the question here is about the about the first fact that I talked about uh, is that what motivates the students to do their job, to, to do their homework or to study is the motivation that uh, or, or, or the uh, anything that motivate uh, I, I think I think what what the uh, what brother Tahir uh, ask is when we do something like mater materialistic yeah I, I mean i mean giving them some award for uh, to study not only the uh, internal motivation that they have no the external one that we give them is that negative thing or not it's actually not negative if you use it properly uh, in, 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 in the right way, in the right way. How do we use it in the right way? This is another thing, actually, we can, inshallah, we're going to talk about it. But it is very important. We can't stop it, giving them a word of what they do. And we can't use it all the time that they feel they have uh, to do uh, that, to get a, uh, a reward for, for what they do. So, inshallah, we're going to talk about that. Uh, in the uh, in, in the steps that we have so this is the first step this is the first step about uh, let's go for the second one okay we have nine steps uh, I can't uh, okay I want to change the slides okay what is the second step we we should know that everyone want to have to know the benefit of what they do and 
if, if I if I uh, if I study, what's the benefit of that? I'm gonna talk about agile and and reward. This is the in the ninth uh, step in the step nine, inshallah ta'ala. But now about what would happen in the future, and this is this is very important. If we talked about our life and what happened in our life and how knowledge affects positively our life, it's very important for them. They they really want to know about you more and more. And this is what happened in the same class, the life skills. Uh, last last uh, uh, week, we talked about achievements, how you, how you can achieve uh, what you want to achieve in the future. They asked me a question and I like every time to let them ask me a question and that show me that they understand when they ask, if they are quiet, if they, are, if they don't have any question, that means that they don't understand, especially those kids in this age. Maybe, maybe the adults, there is no problem. They, they don't ask sometimes or something like that, but, but no, in this age they have, because they have many doubts. And if they don't have a question, that means they don't concentrate with you. They don't understand the subject sometimes. So they asked me, for you, for you, Mr. Ahmed, have you achieved what you wanted to achieve? And how did that happen? When I talked to them, I did not say, yes, I achieved or I did not achieve. No. I gave them my story. And that what they like. I gave them my story. I told them about my story and uh, how I really could reach what I like. And they really wanted to, uh, to, to know more and more. So, uh, they asked me, what age was that? And what happened? And did your parents accept that? And when you choose, when you left you, uh, that subject when you were in the, in the, in the, in the university and changed to another subject, why did you do that while you spent two years in that subject? And they had a lot of questions after that because they see my experience and I show them how the knowledge really benefit for me and uh, how that can be benefit their life. I have to do that. I have to let them think about it. Okay. So this is the second thing. And we're going to go, inshallah, for the third step. Third step. We, we should, uh, as, as I told you, uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, as I told you, I was talking to them about their interests and what they like. We should let them talk about their interests and what they like. Not only the subject that I told them about. No, what you like. We have to understand, we have to understand that sometimes they don't like the subject that I'm talking about. They don't like that. Do, do I lose time when I, uh, when I give them the opportunity? Do we waste time? No. No, they get involved. And I can connect what I said and what the subject that I'm talking about with, with their interest. It is very important to let them express themselves and talk about themselves and that what they like. I want to tell you uh, two days ago, I uh, post a question in in in, uh, in the uh, uh, in the Facebook, and I want to show you uh, this uh, this a question, and I want to show you how the people react with that question. Okay, uh, inshallah. Now I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm gonna go am I, to see how it is very important for people. It's so important for people 
to talk about this subject, okay? Uh, now, let me do share screen. Share screen. This is my page. This is my page. All right. And I want to show you something that I post every day. Every day I post something. Uh, and you're going to see that people, how, how people react and how they involved and how many people reached my post. Here, 2,630. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's about the Hajjah to 2630. Okay, let's go a little bit. Yeah. I, I have uh, every, every week uh, on Thursday, I have a live uh, session for the parents. Okay, we can see here the people reached here 1202, here 1800, here this is a, an article 3000. Uh, you can see here. Uh, just add uh, 1,400, uh, 2,000, okay? Uh, see that, 3,000. Sometimes it's become like 5,000 here, 5,000, okay? But let's see this question. I'm going to show you that a, a question that I post a few days ago, two days ago, actually. and how people react. See, this is the question. 15,000, 15,000 reached this post and 123 comments. For what? What is the question? What is the question about? To see how important how important is to know about your teacher? I said here, when you remember that the most important that you love uh, your teacher, the most important teacher that you love in your, uh, in, in your life, why do you love that teacher? Inshallah, inshallah, I'm gonna give yeah, any, uh, uh, like statistics about this question because many people uh, answered. It's really lovely answer. Most of them, they talk about, this is what we have to understand. They talk about how the teacher let them express themselves and explore their abilities most of them they talked about this issue uh, in this way and this is very important for us to understand people love the people who let them and if they love you let me tell you this is a fact this is a fact curriculum is very important the administration is very important for the school yes the environment is very important. The activities are very important. But none of them at all is important uh, or, or significant in the student's life as you. No one of them. As a teacher. Teacher is the most important. If you have, if you have the best building, if you have uh, the uh, best activity if you have uh, maybe maybe you have uh, uh, maybe money if you have everything for uh, you are financed for your uh, for your school but you don't have good teachers no one will come to you no one of the student likes to go to go to your school no 
because you have bad teachers. So it is very important as we see how people react and how people uh, like to involve with this uh, question. Okay, let's go back now. Uh, want to stop sharing. All right, and let's go for the third step. Uh, or, or the fourth step, all right? This is the fourth step. We have to understand that uh, our students, uh, they are they have different thinking and they uh, gain knowledge in different way some of them in their visual way some of them in uh, hearing uh, hearing and they 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 really uh, enjoy enjoy it when you use what they like all right some of them physically and them, some of them like it in a group and some of them like it individually we have to understand and to study that because if you use all of them, you will not miss any of the students. And if you use just only what you like, it's, it will not work. As one of the uh, author, uh, his name is Daryl Karingi, I, I, I think that you know him. He said that if you want to attract someone for your subject, you can't, take what you like for, the, for him. You have to know what he likes or what she likes. Uh, he gave an example of that. When you go, like, uh, like we, uh, maybe most of us like biryani, okay? I, I like biryani, okay? When I go to, uh, for, for fishing, I don't take biryani for, for fish. I have to take some worm. That's something I don't like. But I use it to catch the fish, to, uh, to have the good fish for myself. But if I get uh, a plate of biryani and take it there and, let, uh, <laughs> and invite the, the fish to come and eat, they will not eat it. So we should understand that and we have to learn and uh, learn more about uh, the way of uh, teaching, okay? This is the uh, step uh, five. Now, uh, step four, sorry. And step five, to use games as an educational tools is very important. Uh, let me tell you about Ali ibn Abi Talib. I told you Ali ibn Abi Talib last time. He said that play with your, uh, with, with your child for seven years. What does it mean? He did not mean that just to play with him. No, teach him in the way of learning. Uh, so, so in, in uh, the way that you play with him or with, or with her, that they will understand it because they like to, to play. They are children. So we have to understand their mindset and how we can uh, play with them uh, with our goal to understand what I want them, I want them to understand. Like if you if you if you tell them about uh, chemistry, if you don't make that fun for them and they play, I I mean when they are kids, they will not understand it. It's boring. It's boring. They will not like it. So it's very important. Uh, this is. Step five and step six now. The teacher makes it clear to students that the important things is the skills they learn, not grades. Most of the parents, most of the teachers, they focus on, on, the, uh, on the grades. And as I remember, as I remember, one of my uh, my, actually, my sibling. Uh, he's 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 actually one of my friends. When we were in the in the uh, school, I was in uh, year six. 
as I remember. We were in year six. One day, we, we took our certificates with our grades, and he told me that I, I will tell you that I will not go back home. I will not go back to my home. I said, why? Where are you going? He said, I'm going to hide. Can you hide me? I said, oh, your parents will, will come to us and ask us. Oh, he said, yes. They will find out that I've come to you. But I'm going to do something. I told him. I gave him an advice. Why, why are you doing that? He said, if my father see my grade, that's he going to kill me. Oh my God, why? For, for myself, I didn't have this problem, alhamdulillah. Why? Because he actually get low grade. And this is the life for him. This is your future, as he said. Is that right? Is that right what that father said? This person actually uh, disappeared for three days. No one knew where he was until they found him in a park. He was hungry. He just drank water from the mosque. Oh my God, what's, what's the problem? He was really scared of his father. We, we actually uh, sometimes let our uh, children get phobia uh, and that kills their motivation for uh, studying. That uh, sometimes happens even with Quran. Learning Quran, do you know that Myself, I always make sure my kids, they don't do, they don't recite Quran, they don't memorize Quran for me or because I order them. I always make sure, ask them, why do you go and memorize Quran? Why do you do that? If you do it for me, please stop it and think how to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always I ask them, do you like what you do when you go to Quran? This is very important. Brothers and sisters, many of us push their children to do what we have to let them love it. And when, you, when they love it, what will happen? You will not have to have a lot of effort to push them and to encourage them. The encouragement comes from inside. So this is uh, the uh, step six, then we will go to step seven. The teacher focus on the strength of excellence of students and prizes them. Uh, let me, uh, let me uh, tell you a, a story that happened to us. When we were, uh, we were in a trip to Malaysia, we had 30 students. One of those students, I can say he was naughty, uh, and uh, he had many problems with the students. We just start the trip. So we ask one of the, one of the uh, teachers with us, supervisors, just focus on the students and find something good that he does. All right? He did that. And let me, Tell you a fact. If you try to find good things and positive things of the students around you I did, and you didn't find anything, the problem is with you, not with the students. I'm sorry to say that. Everyone has positive and negative things. And unfortunately, most of the people, they try to catch the, the, the negative things, and they focus on it. What happened? When we were in the airplane, traveling from place to another, he did something very simple, and it's not, not that big. He saw a tissue on the ground, and he took it and put it in the trash. The, uh, the supervisor came and told me what happened. Okay. Salat al-Asr, after Salat al-Asr, we presented him as a good person who did a great job as a prophet.
Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us what we do with the thing if we find something, any, uh, any, anything that can bother people, that if we take it, this is sadaqa. This is like donation. And we let him come and present him as a good person. And we give him a prize and we uh, thanked him after this moment he was one of the best student in all the trip the trip was 15 days alhamdulillah so we have to catch the good things from the others so they like what they do they like to be with you they like you they love you because you are really the person who is yeah, who, who can and in this in this trip another thing happened so listening to them is very important another thing happened that i when i when i was talking to one of the students who was 16 years old and i smell i smell uh, uh, the, the smoke that he smoked i took him to his to his uh, room and I asked him, did you smoke? He was scared. I told him, don't worry, just tell me. Did you smoke? Do you know the rule? And you know you are not allowed to do that. He was scared. And I let him sit down. I let him talk. Two minutes, after two minutes, while he was talking, and told me about how he started that and how he couldn't stop it, he started crying. I told him, why are you crying? He said, Mr. Ahmed, I, this is the first time that I could continue my story until this time. My father, when I talked to him, he slapped my face. When the teacher found me in the in, in, in the school did that they kicked me out from the school without talking to me even talking to me for three days i was banded to come to the school so no one listened to me this is the first time that i feel that i can express myself and i did but now i want to tell you something i promise and i will bring the rest that i have from the a cigarette and I will give it to you and throw it. I told him no I will not take it I don't want to touch it just throw it if you don't want to continue just to throw it so he threw it and in the end of the of the thread he talked about this story and he said how that affected him uh, the uh, step step eight the teacher respect his student uh, observe their rights and uh, dignity. Uh, let me, I, I, I will give you a story about that. It's, it's a very important story. Uh, I, I, I visited Lebanon uh, with, with a group of students and we went to this castle. I want to show you the castle. Can you see it? This castle, okay, here the bridge. We went to this castle. This castle called Musa. Qal'at Musa, castle of Musa. Who is Musa? Musa is this person. I don't want to take a uh, long time for that, but see, this is Musa. He's an old man who built this castle. What's the story of Musa and how he could reach this achievement and how did he build this story that actually uh, uh, it's, it's a tourism place now. People go there when they, you, uh, when, you, when they visit Lebanon and it has a museum inside. First, first of all, here there is a, a door, which is a big door, a big gate, but it has a small door. He did not open that door, which is in the big. I, I will tell you about this small door what what does it mean and why why did he what's the concept of that he opened the 
big gates, people come inside and they meet him. And the most important uh, room in that in this castle is this room. Can you see this room? Let you show it. I'll let you see it. All right. This is the teacher, and this is a student. This teacher hit this student. What is the story of this, uh, this uh, action and what happened? This student is this man. That happened in real. It's based on a true story. Uh, that happened when he was in grade three, okay? This teacher is the art teacher. He asked all the students to draw a picture, all right? When he draw, draw any, anything, he, he said that I don't remember what he told us to draw, but I draw a castle. When he draw the castle, he came to him and asked him, what did you draw? He said, I draw a castle. So why did you draw a castle while I asked you to draw another thing? He said, because I like the castle and I want to build this castle in the future. And he was a poor person, poor student. He laughed at him and he told him that you did something wrong and you have to draw what I want you to draw. the teacher got angry and he hit him. From that day, Musa did not attend the uh, class, did not attend uh, the school, and he left the school because of what happened. His parents had problem with this teacher, but he did not get his right, so he did not continue his study. He felt that he wanted to do his dream just for revenge, just for revenge. And he, yeah, in all his life, he's been thinking about revenge of this teacher. Uh, what did he do? He built, he could get money, he built this castle, then he uh, actually built, uh, he, 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 when he, when he, when he designed, when he designed the, uh, the, the gate, he designed it with a small one. When you go for the small one, you can't go without bowing. You have to bow when you go inside. I asked him, why did you do that door? And why don't you open it now? He said, that door was for my teacher. I wanted him to come and see my castle but when he come to my to my castle i wanted him to bow for me and for my castle that he did not like to see it in my paper how how hate how much hate that student had toward that teacher some of the answer that I get, some of the people said that we don't like any of them. Of the teachers that, that I ask, who, who do you love and why do you love them? Some of them, some of them, it's little actual. But some of them say we don't like them. They let us hate going to school. I, I said that I, I, I actually I wanted to make it easy for that person, Musa. I told him, oh Musa. You should ask, you should thank him. He made you rich and you could build this, this castle. He could not actually uh, complete his world because he was really wanted to cry. Uh, I said, I'm sorry if I hurt you or, or, or I said something that uh, broke your heart. He said, no, no, really I did that, but I didn't do what I like. I did it just only for revenge. And the most important thing that I lost 
is the knowledge that I lost because of that teacher. I hate that teacher. Then he said that when I finished this castle, I went to search for that teacher, to see this teacher and bring him to my castle. But he said, unfortunately, when I went to his city, I asked about him. They told, he, they told me that he passed away a week ago. I didn't reach my revenge, but now I have a castle for terrorism to come and see it. Okay, so we have to understand respecting teacher, uh, the students actually make change, make change. The last steps, the last step, is, uh, step nine, linking learning to God's approval and the great, uh, a, a great reward that God has prepared for learning speakers. And there are many, many verses had, uh, and hadith from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about that. It's actually very important. This, uh, act, I, I can say, uh, this is material, materialistic world now. Uh, all the people talk about uh, what's the job that you're gonna uh, get, uh, how money that you're gonna gain, what is your salary in the future. This is not the only thing that we think about because people who think in this way, when they don't get the money that they thought about, when they don't uh, get the job that they thought about, what would happen? They thought their knowledge and their learning is wasting of time. Many of the students say now, when, they, when you talk to them, if you really want to be a footballer, they say, why do I, I, I want to go to football and go to the, uh, to the, uh, to a good club, then I will get again more money than any doctor, any, any, <laughs> any engineer uh, here in, in, the, in the life. Uh, but, but you don't know, uh, you, he doesn't know and he doesn't think about what the reward that he get when he get knowledge and when he learn in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, our, our aim, when we learn, when we teach, that in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we understand that the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much, much bigger. And we can't compare that in, in, in dunya. So if they understand it, they do it in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ikhlas purely. They do it purely and that will make it really, uh, they, they, when they feel it and they understand it, the encouragement will come from inside when they think about the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what the riva from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes when they learn. It's very important to tell our students about that always and remind them with that. Uh, at the end, uh, this is the nine, the nine steps that I uh, try to cover today uh, for all of us uh, to encourage our students to learn and to love uh, learning and uh, inshallah that makes sense and that uh, will be in uh, real life for you. Jazakumullah khair and thank you very much for all of you. Barakallah.